Welcome back to another Door King Tech Tip. Today we're going to discuss performing the RS-232 test. Here, this view here is looking at the female end of a DB9 connector on our serial cable. So let's look at the orientation here. We have the five holes on top and the four holes on the bottom. The upper right hole here is pinhole number one. To the left of that is pinhole number two, and the left of that is three. So we want to add a jumper to pinholes number two and three. Now the bottom row, the center two holes there is seven and eight, and that's where we want to add our second jumper before our RS-232 test on your serial cable. On this step here, we're going to connect the RS-232 cable to the board terminal strip. We have it connected already, and now we're going to make the connection to the board. Make sure you focus on the terminal strip hitting all of the pins here because that is a common mistake. Now we are going to talk about some of the requirements before the RS-232 test. We got to make sure that we have power on the auxiliary terminal strip on terminals 1 and 2. Now the board comes with two power supplies, 16.5 volt VAC, and one is dedicated for terminals 1 and 2 and the other one is dedicated for the main terminal strip. Do not share this power together. Continuing with the RS-232 test, let's review. Make sure your serial cable is connected to the RS-232 terminal strip and that you have dedicated power on your auxiliary terminal strip on terminals 1 and 2. Let's go ahead and start programming and start the test. So we're going to enter star 17 in the master code. The unit display will read short 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, instructing us to put a jumper on the RS-232 terminal strip between terminals 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. We opted to put the jumpers at the end of the serial cable uh, to test the entire assembly. Let's press star now to start the test. The display read hardware pass and one single tone indicated the passing of the test. Let's go ahead and simulate a failure now and we'll start the test again. And we'll hit star again. Hardware fail was read on the display and you notice it had multiple tones at the end of the test indicating the, the test was a failure. If the test fails, go ahead and refer to the matrix chart in the manual to check continuity between the RS-232 terminal strip and the end of the serial cable on the DB9 connector. If you're doing the RS-232 test on an 1838 board and you don't have a display, you're going to rely on the tones that are emitted after the test is started. So again, one solid tone will indicate a passing of the test and multiple tones after the test will indicate a failure. 